So it is finally here, ChatGPT's new search engine, GPT Search, Search GPT, Chat GPT Search, whatever you would like to call it, it is now here. It is available, it is integrated into the downloadable browser, and it is very, very good. And after, I think, a fair few months of it being in a test period with only few people being able to test it, it's here. Now, the difference with this search engine is that it is ad-free, browser-friendly, it doesn't track you, supposedly, and obviously, it's going to be compared to Google in terms of it being a search engine. Now, originally, I wanted to make a video about it being a comparison video, but Google, to me, is still a different entity to what G uh, ChatGPT is with the search element now added. Though it can search and find information, I think it'd be a more realistic comparison to perplexity or something like that, which may be a future video. Don't know yet. So let's jump straight in and I'm going to show you five use case scenarios of how you can use this. I asked it directly what would be something really interesting to show what it can do. You are able to activate it straight away by coming down here and pressing this little button. You do have to be a pro user. So this is for paid members, not for free, but you can press this and it will search the web. That's all you have to do. So anything you then put in in terms of a prompt is, you know, going to search the web. But just before I go ahead and do that, two things. I'm going to be using the Mac version, so the downloadable app and on my desktop instead because I prefer that. But also you can download ChatGPT search as a plugin for your browser. So if you search something, well, then that search will open up in your GPT window or downloadable app if you have it. So again, let me just show you how you can find that because at the minute of uh, making this video, uh, Sam Altman right here, as you can see, searching for a Chrome extension is not easy. So here is the link. Of course, it's not being well advertised by Google because it's direct competition. So again, if you want the link, it will be down below in the video description or if you find this post on uh, Twitter then or X, then you'll find it here. But here it is. And this is what it looks like. You can, I've already downloaded it, but if you want to download it, you'd press that. And then quite simply, if we said, what is the future fuel cafe? And then if you just see right here, chat GPT search, search if we hit enter on that then you can see straight away it opens the window it's searching the web Ooh. uh oh the future fuel cafe is a digital platform that explores the intersection of artificial intelligence business and personal development it offers a podcast series featuring in-depth conversations look at that hmm interesting and he even has my sources right here YouTube, Spotify, Linktree. So the first one is searching the best restaurants around me. Best restaurants near me. Now I don't think I have my location set up on this because I don't like doing all that sort of stuff. So I'll just put in best restaurants near me, Sofia, Bulgaria and hit enter. And then let's see what we find. Searching the web. Ooh, interesting. And has it stopped? Oh no, it's loading. No, no, it was just taking a little while. And straight away, it has different restaurants. Interesting, all the reviews, very nice, says where to go. And you know, then it has the sources as well. So if we click on sources, TripAdvisor, um, Sophia Adventures, it's actually pretty cool. Very nice actually. And then we can go to images. Ah, oh, okay, so it actually loads up the images from the from the search. If we click a link, I don't know, Sophia Adventures, let's do that. It does open it. Okay. And then here you go. 21 best restaurants in Sophia picked by locals. I'm impressed. Okay. And then if we click on, um, let's say made in home open restaurant, what does that do? And it takes you again, straight through to the restaurant, which is their Facebook page. So again, it's very nice. Maybe you can interact with this. So if we said, I want to go to made in home. Can you make a reservation for me there for tonight at 8 p.m. for five people and uh, give me directions from Surdica Metro Station on how to get there. So maybe in different websites or different integrations in the future. If you say I want to make a reservation, it'll bring up a form or something. But you can see here, Made in Home is a popular restaurant. We can, if we go on Google Maps, does it open it up? I don't know, we'll see. Okay, Made in Home, it didn't give me the link from Surdica Station, but it has found it on um, Google. And then again, reservation details tonight, 8 p.m. size, uh, party size, five people, reservations, you can call this. I recommend contacting the restaurant directly to make a reservation as I don't have the capability to do so on your behalf, but you can reach them on this number. So again, at least it gives me the details. It tells me how to get there as well, which is actually very nice. Uh, payment, 
it's on a cash only basis ambient so it's actually a very nice detail so i think this very good so I like this first example, very good. It passes the test. We are going to be looking at stocks. So apparently you can get interactive stocks and interactive charts or something like that, searching the web. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, so again, it just brings up the chart right in the browser. This is, <laughs> this is actually pretty incredible, I have to say. Uh, and then you can go through your different days here. Maybe if you put in as well, can you put in, for example, can you add Google and Tesla to this stock graph. So I want to see if you can add different stocks to one graph so you can see it at the same time. That'd be very interesting. Okay. So it does it in a different way. Um, but it says here, it's created like a little table. So very nice. Can you put this as a line graph? No, it doesn't. So it presents it as a block graph like this, at least unless I'm prompting it wrong. But again, very nice. So there you go. The third one is searching trending topics, trending ideas. If you're a blog writer, content creator, you make videos, or you just like to see what's trending in general, because that is your favorite hobby outside of sleeping and watching Netflix, then this can also be for you. All we have to do is paste in this top video editing tools for creators. And let's see what it does. I don't know. Again, this is something that it recommended for me to advertise it in the video. So, ooh, here we go. Adobe Premiere Pro, that's what I use. So, yep, DaVinci Resolve. I know that's been very good. I've been very tempted by that for a very long time. Selecting the right video editing software is crucial for creators. Very true. Hit Film Express, never heard of that. iMovie, I think I have that on here, but I've never opened it. Final Cut Pro, never really used it. But again, very nice. What about AI video editing software for beginners? Something I've spelt it wrong, but I don't care. I'll understand it. Um, what about AI video editing software for beginners? Okay, I'm interested. Ooh, and it does it again. Here we go. Cap, cap wing, cap wing. Adobe Premiere Elements, True, Lumen 5, never heard of it. I don't think, well, have I heard of that? LifeWire, I'll have to have a look at that. That looks familiar. In a simple nutshell, which is the best for me as a beginner? Yeah, I spelt it right this time. And for me to grow in my skill set of video editing whilst learning about AI video editing tools. Look at that. And I want it to know that it's given me the different results. Give me a little bit of a summary, you know, give me a conclusion. So for beginner aiming to develop video editing skills while exploring AI enhanced tools, Adobe Premiere Pro is an excellent choice. And again, I do say that as you become more proficient, transition into Premiere Pro is seamless. And it is good. Premiere Pro is very good. I make all my videos on it. It definitely has its frustrations and it is buggy still, but it has come a long way in the seven years that I've used it. And uh, it's a solid choice, so I can't, you know, disagree with that. So now we can do comparisons of products. Now I do use ChatGPT for this to some extent and perplexity, and it is very good at that. But now you have the internet involved directly, we can search different products. So for this example, again, recommended by GPT search di directly, Canon EOS versus Sony Alpha cameras versus Fuji film xt4 because i love fuji and i also now really like the panasonic panasonic g85 because that's what i'm filming on okay it's essential to consider such factors such as sensor size image quality and obviously they're all different types of cameras the g85 is a very much older camera i think it came out 2017 or 18 something like that here you go when comparing all these different types of things canon Image quality, I'm not going to go for all of it. You can pause the video and read for it yourself. But Fuji X-T4, video capabilities. Um, conclusion, here we go, conclusion. Canon EOS, ideal for those seeking a versatile system of a borderland selection, reliable performance. Sony, nah, never been a fan of Sony. They always overheat and have just been unreliable. But I will say Sony does have great image quality and it's great night performance. Anyway, suitable for users prioritizing cutting edge autofocus and it does have great autofocus. An image, like I said, X-T4, great for photographers, unique color profiles and robust video features. I think Fuji X-T4 is the best still. And the G85, best for budget conscious users who value video capabilities and a compact system. 
the final one we want to use it to get a recommendation so let's just say we are on a holiday or we have you know we want to take a holiday in a city where we live or where we've newly moved to so for example sofia in bulgaria for me searching the web very nice very nice Ooh, i love the picture straight away look at that i love the fact it brings up those yeah, it is beautiful. Vitasha Boulevard, which is like Las Ramblas in Barcelona, or Calle Larios in Malaga, Spain, St. George. Yeah. And again, it just gives some nice different, you know, things to look at if you want to go here. I mean, all of them are granted okay. I think it's cheated a little bit as the all from the crazy tourist, which is all the same one. So let's see if it actually uses different sources and didn't just rely on the all of them. I mean, they're all solid choices, but I want it to look at different ones, all the best from different, you know, areas, not just just this one this is giving me the same results from the crazy tourist so yeah it's, it's literally the same list so yeah you know go check that out but again just more just more of the fact that i want it to you know utilize different sources of the world wide web you know www world wide web not just one website on the whole world wide web so that is it that is everything let me know what you think of these five use case scenarios are there any other use case scenarios that you've used is there anything that i've missed but for me i think this is a great integration overall it obviously still needs to incorporate more things but i think it is on the right track and i love the way you can take that information and interact with it like you know speaking to a normal chatbot i think great competition for it at the minute is going to be perplexity ai especially because you can download their plugin which i use and you can summarize a web page a website or a whole sort of internet as a whole to find information and i think it gives more dynamic results still but because i use chat gpt daily pretty much it's a great tool for me to have comment subscribe follow the podcast if there's any people you think i should speak to as well don't be shy let me know other than that have a lovely day and i'll see you in the next video bye